I'm Masaki Matsushita. We are OpenStack R&D team of MTT Communications. Our mission is providing technical support for our OpenStack related products and making contribution to OpenStack. Uh, here is Yuki. Hi, uh, I'm Yuki. Uh, I'm also engineer in MTT Communications. Uh, I'm in charge of uh, operating and managing uh, our OpenStack cloud for ver verification uh, purpose. So mainly, engage, uh, I engage it, uh, OpenStack as an operator. Today, we will talk about private Swift endpoint. Here is the agenda of this presentation. First, we will explain our background. Then, we will introduce a similar solution in AWS called VPC Endpoint. After that, we will discuss our implementation of private endpoint and OpenStack and additional operational improvements. Finally, we will summarize the presentation and show some future, plan, uh, future tasks. Let's move on our background. This diagram shows an example of web application system or public cloud of OpenStack. We have Swift behind the load balancer and for API, and they connected to API network, the red one. The load balancer is connected to, also connected to external, external network, the blue one. And the right side is user tenant. There is a load balancer for users. And web application servers are behind it. Application servers are connected to internal network, the green one. And they have no routers because they don't require direct internet access. Then, let's think that we want to save some, some log files to Swift from these servers. In this environment, users can access to Swift through the internet. However, application servers have no connectivity to Swift in this case, because there is no connectivity to external network. And we don't want to provide internet access to the servers, only to use Swift. So our interest, our interest, interest is how to provide access to Swift for servers connected closed private network while preventing internet access. To achieve our interest, we tried to provide users private Swift endpoint. Private Swift endpoint enables servers uh, which has no internet access to use Swift. We, uh, we referred to the similar solution of Amazon Web Services. It's called VPC Endpoint. VPC Endpoint also provides private endpoints to close network in VPC. VPC is an isolated section in AWS. It is similar to tenants in OpenStack. Additionally, Amazon provides a feature to restrict access to S3, endpoint policy. We can apply endpoint policies to restrict access to, on, uh, to only, spec only specified buckets. Before talking, talking about private endpoint in OpenStack, let's look into Amazon web, Amazon solution. This diagram shows user's tenant called VPC. Users can make several VPCs, so they are VPC1 and VPC2. VPC1 has two subnets, 
public and private. Virtual machines in public, sub, uh, public subnet can access to the internet through the internet gateway. On the other hand, virtual machines in private subnet can't access the internet because the router has no route to the internet gateway for private subnet. The same goes for S3 because we access it through the internet gateway. Virtual machines in public subnet can access X3, but virtual machines in private subnet cannot access S3. The VPC endpoint enables users to access S3 from private subnet. It provides the route only to S3 S3 API endpoint. The VPC endpoint also provides a very useful feature, endpoint policy. By applying endpoint policy, we can restrict access through the VPC endpoint to specified buckets. A bucket is an equivalent term of container in Swift. Up to here, I talked about the VPC endpoint in Amazon. Now, let me talk about how to make private Swift endpoint in OpenStack. So what we want to do is to provide access to Swift without providing internet access. To achieve our interest, our basic idea is providing an exter external network as API network, uh, the blue one. API network is not connected to the internet. There are the load balancer as API endpoint and DNS server for private network. The DNS server for private, private network is required to respond DNS queries with the IP address of private endpoint. By doing so, uh, users can use the endpoint registered on Keystone without considering the real IP address of private endpoint. To use uh, the DNS server for private network, users need to set DNS server for private subnet. Then, application servers can look up the record. We can use a private endpoint with same domain name as a public endpoint. Finally, we can reach the private endpoint by private IP address. Uh, that is our first step of private suite endpoint. We considered pros and cons for OpenStack administrators. This implementation is very easy and simple because it uses only normal features of Neutron. It also means uh, it's easy to introduce private endpoints to existing environments. However, it's, it's end user's responsibility to change DNS server for, uh, for private subnet. Let's move on to pros and cons for users. End users can introduce API network by using Neutron API. Uh, meanwhile, end users need to change the DNS server for private subnet. In addition, private, private IP addresses for API network are reserved by providers. Next, I will turn it over to Yuki. Uh, 
Uh, thank you for Masaki. Um, Masaki shows the basic idea and pros and cons of our in implementation. As he mentioned, uh, there were some issues, such as need for extra DNS, uh, change, change the reference of DNS, and so on. In this part, I will show you our challenge to improve uh, these issues. And there are three challenges. Let me start from the first challenge. This challenge is to improve uh, usability of end user regarding uh, DNS settings. Uh, until now, the end user needed uh, to change the reference of DNS. So, uh, this challenge, uh, the goal of this challenge is to use some techniques so that uh, the users uh, don't need to be conscious of the DNS when you use API network. Uh, first, uh, I'll share the basic knowledge of DNS, DNS mask network managed. Uh, if the DNS mask is used as DHCP driver, provides the DNS function as well as DHCP. So uh, the user can use the DHCP server as DNS, but uh, the user can only resolve the uh, instance name at default. Uh, therefore, uh, the user can't resolve the public domain, for example, uh, mtt.com. Uh, getting off the track slightly, uh, if you use older versions than Liberty, you can only resolve the template name host hyphen IP address local. Uh, getting back on track. Uh, in the HTTP agent, uh, we can set Huada on DNS mask in order to resolve the unknown domain. If it's set, uh, the query for unknown name is what is to the uh, uh, specified DNS. And we are able to uh, resolve the public domain. But uh, the point to be watched out is that uh, the forwarding is sent from the same network uh, as other instances. So uh, if it refer to outside DNS, uh, we can forward uh, from private network. So uh, what settings should we change for enabling forwarder? Uh, DHCP agent in the file uh, have a setting option for it, which means uh, we can set forwarder uh, for each tenant or network, and we can manage it. Manage uh, we can't manage it uh, by API. But uh, we want to uh, change the forwarder by which external network is connected to, uh, so that uh, the user can call API without changing the DNS when connected to API network. So uh, I implemented a workaround so that we can access the DNS server dedicated to API with the uh, same public IP. Because uh, the IP of Huada uh, can't be changed uh, for each network. In order to achieve it, the operator assigns the same public IP as DNS cache server to uh, DNS for API and uh, inject static root uh, uh, in, and inject static root to the tenant router. In this way, uh, I change the forwarder by which external network is connected to, and uh, the user become uh, free from changing the reference of the DNS. Explanation for first challenge is done. So. Uh, Previous challenge achieved that the users don't need to be conscious of DNS, but uh, in previous resolution, uh, we need to inject the static root to each tenant router. This, work uh, this workload is very heavy. So next our interest is, can we access the DNS dedicated to API without uh, configuring each tenant router? So we worked on this. I'll clear this problem and review the goal of this challenge. This problem is that uh, we need to inject the static root to tenant router wherever call OpenStack API via API network. Uh, if tenant is included, uh, this workload is very heavy. So uh, the goal of second challenge is that we become uh, free from configuring each tenant router. 
Against this problem, there are some solutions. Uh, for example, uh, automating to inject static, automating to inject static load, or using the router outside OpenStack. Uh, I adapted a router solution because it's a simple. Uh, in this solution, uh, we need new extra router for being uh, injected static load, but uh, we don't need to. Uh, we but we don't need to inject static load to tenant router yet. And uh, all we have to do for tenant router is setting a default gateway to a new extra router. So uh, all packets are sent. Uh, also, all packets are sent to this extra router and forward and forward it to DNS server for API. And be, uh, because uh, this router has static root. So we become uh, free from bothersome to configure each tenant router. So uh, we added uh, the extra router in this diagram. This diagram is what Masaki showed you earlier as our implementation. In this diagram, uh, I put one router uh, to simplify the explanation, but uh, we actually need two routers at least because it can be single point of failure in the case of one router. Uh, lastly, uh, I will explain the ch challenge against the problem that we need to maintain DNS dedicated to API and uh, extra records. Uh, let me confirm this problem and, and the goal. Uh, the, this problem is that in order to call API via API network, we need to prepare the DNS dedicated to API network. But it's a, bother, it's a bothersome that we need extra DNS just to call API. So uh, the goal of third improving challenge is that we can call API from private network without extra DNS server. Uh, this challenge is uh, simple. In the same way as the DNS, uh, we inject static root for endpoint uh, IP to the extra router. And this, uh, this enables us to access the load balancer with the public IP, uh, Z, from private network. Uh, it was access it was accessing load balancer with the API network IP until we injected static root. Now that uh, we can reach load balancer with the uh, public endpoint IP from private network, so we don't need to prepare the extra DNS server. And we can use the DNS cache instead of it. Uh, up to here, uh, the explanation of improving challenge is finished and uh, improved usability and operationability. Then uh, I'll introduce the conclusive answer we are actually operating now. And this is the diagram of conclusive answer. Uh, this diagram is more simple than what we showed at first. From here, uh, I'll explain the API call flow from uh, DMZ, net, DMZ and private network. First, let us check one from DMZ network. Um, VM access the DNS mask to resolve the domain, and DNS mask forward it to DNS cache. Therefore, we can resolve the domain name. Uh, once uh, VM knows the endpoint IP, VM access the uh, uh, load balancer via a public network. So we can call API in this way. It's simple. The MZ network part is that all. So uh, let us move to the case of private network. Uh, I'd like to start from explanation for how to resolve the name. Uh, the VM access the DNS mask to resolve domain uh, in the same way as the MZ. Um, and the DNS mask uh, try to forward it to DNS cache. Um, uh, the tenant router uh, doesn't uh, know the root for DNS cache, then the tenant router forward it to the router outside OpenStack as default gateway. And this router has a static code for DNS cache. 
Um, so uh, what is via uh, API network? So we can resolve domain name in this way. Uh, once VM knows the IP of endpoint, uh, the VM try to access the load balancer with the public IP, uh, quadruple Z. Uh, um, in, the, uh, in the same way as resolving domain, tenant router doesn't have doesn't have the route for load balancer. Then, uh, what it to extra router? And the router outside OpenStack uh, has a static route uh, for load balancer. <coughs> and what it via API network? So the VM in private network can call API. I'll show you the demonstration video. Uh, I took the video for using private endpoint in OpenStack and em environment. Uh, so uh, this diagram is uh, the network topology on horizon when uh, the user login with member log. Uh, uh, let me start. Uh, let me start from the explanation for demonstration environment. Uh, Blue network is a public network that is connected to internet, and as you know, uh, this as symbol means that uh, this network is external. Uh, orange network is uh, API network and also external. And uh, the network name contains on the IP range because uh, the member role isn't allowed to know the IP range for an external network. Um, there is a router in each external network. One is internet gateway. The other is API gateway. Uh, green network is a tenant network that is connected to internet gateway. So uh, we can confirm the address range because this is a tenant network. And uh, this is the road one VM. So last network is a private network that is connected to uh, any router. And uh, there are three virtual machines in this network. So let us log into this VM. So we are about to look up the floating IP address. Uh, we can know uh, the floating ad IP address in instance detail page. So I copy it. So I'd like to log into the load balancer VM by SSH. First, uh, check the internet connection from this VM. We found that this VM has internet connection. And uh, check the resolution of the domain name. Um, uh, inquiries uh, is successful. Uh, check also OpenStack and the point domain. Uh, these inquiry, inquiries uh, proceed uh, by DNS mask neutral manage. So we are now in the road balancer VM. Uh, let us log into the application server VM from the load balancer VM. So we could log into the application server VM. Uh, check the internet connection. But uh, this VM doesn't have the internet connection. And check the resolution of the domain name. But uh, this VM can't resolve the domain name. Uh, surely, uh, also we can't resolve the domain name of our OpenStack endpoint domain. So, uh, if we try to access Swift with the official client tools, we fail to access it. So in order to access Swift from the application um, server VM while restricting internet connection, uh, we add the interface 
of private network to the API gateway. So uh, we found that the interface on the API gateway is added. So I'll uh, check the internet connection again. Surely uh, it can't reach the internet yet. And check the resolution of the domain name again. And this VM becomes able to resolve the domain because of plugging the API network. And check also the domain of our OpenStack endpoint domain. Uh, resolve the name, and uh, we got the public IP, not API network IP. So we try to access Swift again. So we become able to access Swift. And uh, there is a one container, and this is a demo container. So I try to upload any file to the to demo container. There is no file yet. Approach the OpenRC file to the demo container on Swift for test. So check again. Uh, we found that the OpenRC file has been added to the demo container. Uh, Surely, uh, we can find that the OpenRC file has been added to the demo container in Horizon. So uh, we can upload the file to Swift via API network while restrict restricting uh, the internet connection. So uh, go back to slide. A session summary. And uh, let me show you the next our interest. Um, this time, we focused on how to reach Swift from uh, close the network while restrict the internet connectivity. As you see demonstration video, uh, we achieve that the users can do it without a special work. Uh, all the users have to do is to connect API external network, and the users can use same endpoint IP and credential as via public. In order to achieve it, uh, we are adding API network and preparing extra router outside OpenStack and injecting static code to extra router. This is summary. So uh, now that we can access Swift uh, without internet connectivity, our interest is moving to endpoint policy. Uh, lastly, I'll briefly introduce the idea already implemented as proof of concept. Our idea is to uh, locate layer 7 firewall uh, in front of load balancer. Uh, we used uh, Nginx and Motruby as layer 7 firewall and uh, use Redis as a database to be stored policy. Uh, Motruby is to check the policy in Redis and uh, judge whether the access is allowed or denied. Currently, uh, we can restrict the accessible bucket by this solution. But uh, I think uh, I want to implement it by utilizing OpenStack project. So we are now interested in Congress project. Uh, this is our next challenge. Uh, so uh, if you want to know the, our temporary workaround in details, please ask us it after this presentation is finished. So uh, our presentation is that all. I would be happy if today's session is very uh, is helpful. And uh, we have a booth in Marketplace. And uh, even in booth, uh, we are explaining our technology to be used in OpenStack based public cloud. So please feel free feel free to come our booth. Thank you for your attention. Thank you.